What's up, y'all? Thank you for tuning in to Deuce of Farms. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how you can control your temps inside your hydroponic setup, whether that be DWC or RDWC. All the methods I'm going to give you should work for both. And before we get started, all I ask is that you guys like, comment, subscribe, go ahead and turn on notifications. I know it's a lot to ask for, but hey, it'll help the channel out a lot. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So in a hydroponic system, DWC and RDWC to be specific, water temps can make or break a grow too high and you increase the risk of running into bacteria and pathogens such as root rot and then too low well we all know you know down low too slow well you know too low then guess what you can stunt the growth and slow down the growth of your plants how do we know what's too high and what's too low well the recommended temperatures are going to be between 65 and 72 this is what i found to be the most common one now you're going to see some people that say hey uh you can go up to 75 degrees hey don't cross 80 degrees hey you can go as low as 60 degrees and for the most part what i found was the common medium ground was 65 to 72 with 68 degrees Fahrenheit being optimal. The reason you want cooler temps is that colder water actually does hold on to more dissolved oxygen as opposed to warmer water but if you have the pump to make up for the lack of water temperature say you're running 75 degrees Fahrenheit but your pump is phenomenal well then there you go that's making up for it but the cooler temps are going to allow you your water to hold more dissolved oxygen and that's the reason for the cooler temps. So we know that we want cooler temps and we know the reason why but let's go ahead and talk about some methods on how to get those cooler temps because I know actively struggling right Right now it's summertime the heat is blazing some people are in the basement some people are in the garage and you really need to know what are some methods for you to get those water temps down so one of the first methods is going to be the cheapest it's the frozen water bottle and a lot of you it's the fan favorite everybody you typically knows about this This is like the go-to it's the cheapest one you have everything in your home but some of you are probably out there you're avoiding this one you're like ah, oh, not this one I'm trying to get past this one I want something new it's not working for me I'm tired of filling up you know bottles and refreezing them so I will elaborate on some more methods as well for you guys. But for those that have never heard of this, pretty much you, you have everything in your house. You can get a frozen water bottle, Gatorade bottle, tubware, throw some water in there, freeze it, and then throw it right into your reservoir. In an RDWC system, you don't have to worry about it being right on your roots because it's in the uh, it's in the reservoir. But in DWC, it's actually going to have to sit on your roots. Like it's going to float around and sit on your roots unless you like tape it to the wall. But, you know, the roots really stretch out. So they're most likely going to be against it. And that's the worry right there. It's like, hey. Am I stressing my plants out from the ice? Like I get it, the water temps are at 68, but specifically where that bucket or not the bucket, where that bottle is at on my roots, it's cold, it's freezing. So is that stressing my plants out? And I've had several friends, I've never tried it myself, but I have had several friends and they swear by it. I messed up saying friends, but I've had several friends and they swear by it. They haven't had any issues. They haven't noticed anything different. But this method is like one of the ones you could use to take like the first step until you get something else. It's like, hey, you know what? I just need to quickly get them down. So go ahead and freeze something, throw it in there until you take the next step up so but you can keep running with this as well the only downfall is you're gonna have to replace them quite frequently depending on how hot your water gets so you could be replacing the water bottles every two to three times a day you know you pro they're probably melting super fast or you just have some gallon water bottle and you probably make it the whole day but that's all going to depend on your situation but you know you could always give it a try and it could just get you into the next step all right so for the next method it's going to be your room temperature you want that ambient room temperature to be low because guess what your bucket the water is pretty much going to reflect that room temperature if your you know room is 78 degrees your water is most likely going to be reflective around that it's going to be 78 degrees but with the lights pinning in the tent you know they're blasting on it so it could be about 80 degrees so you know the light's going to come into play with that but roughly your water temp is going to be at least as high as your actual room temperature. So the first, one of the first steps you could do is actually lower your room temperature. Well, how do you do that? There are several methods. You can get an AC. That's going to be like one of the most expensive ones. Um, also, your H, your central air, your HVAC, you can crank it down, which is going to suck because like maybe you're cranking it down to 65 to make up for the fact that your room is 78. You're, you're not going to want that. You don't want to have to battle like your whole house with just a room specifically. So that's why like the actual AC air conditioner, the portable one is going to work. Um, but that's going to be like the most costly effective but you're also going to be able to do stuff like if you're in a tent instead of a room uh, opening something like opening the vent in the tent adding some fans you know really get some air pushing around so you know a lot of that heat is being dispersed the dehumidifier is going to help you know just overall you know the humidity levels you know humidity always makes things feel a little bit hotter um, as well as your light your light intensity you could turn down your light intensity or move your lights a little higher and with the lights, uh, you can also remove the driver. You can place the driver outside of the tent. So 
Um, if you're in a room, then I guess you can kind of just move it into the closet, just the driver into the closet or right outside of the room. But for those of you in a tent, if you have the ability to remove your driver, I started doing it even though I didn't need to. I was like, you know what? I'm just throwing this driver right outside just in case. So it's like I got an AC, but I would rather, you know, save the AC's power. Like I don't want to have to constantly fight the driver. So I just remove the drivers outside because those are going to be like the hottest things. Also with the lights, you can run them at night. Like if you're running 9 a.m., you're on 12, 12, you're running 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., Go ahead and flip that and do a 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So it's pretty much cool the entire time. It may not be super cool, but those are going to be the coolest times because, you know, like 11, 12 o'clock, 1, 2, 3. Those are like the peak hours where it's like blazing. It's super hot. So if you're running at night, you're going to save your, you know, HVAC is not having to pump out as cool as air all the time. So it's not having to really struggle to get temps down. Is, or if you got a portable AC, it's not really having to struggle to get those temps down. It's maybe still going to be super hot, but it's going to lower at least a few degrees and you're going to save money. So that's a good step. It's something I neglected to do at first. And I just recently started doing and it's made a huge difference. Lowered the bill as well as lowering temperatures. So you can do stuff like that. You have your fans. And one thing I actually shout out to 420 scene because he, you can check this video out. I'll have it tagged down below, but he actually made a video on how to bring down the temperatures in your tent. And it's literally just using a box fan. Box fans are what, 15, 20 bucks. You can go to Lowe's, Walmart, whatever the 20 inch, I believe it's like a 20 inch box fan. And what he said was, I, I probably might mess it up, but he said, you know, you, every tent has, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know the name for him, but the little, the opening, you know, the little vent little square pretty much a rectangle you pull that and you got like a little vent right there well most tents have those at the bottom and at the top or they actually have like the inline fan uh, the ducting right there and what you could do is place that box fan right there and i've done this plenty of times with my actual window if you're using a room what you could do is here i'll get into that in a second all right so for the tents what you could do is boom if you're in a tent place the box fan down right there by that vent and it's going to suck in all you know what i'm saying it's just going to blow in air and everything's going to get moving. You got isolating fans on the inside of it. So a lot of all that air is moving around, but it's going to push in cooler air into the tent, lowering the temperatures. And he claims that, you know, it can get down. I think he was saying he was, you know, 80s, but it got him down to the 70s by doing that. So I feel like I, I didn't have a box fan, but I did start putting a, a oscillating fan down there and I put it at full power and it actually has lowered the temperature. It has helped quite a bit because my tent, one of my tents has been getting super hot, but it's not my hydro tent. So I'm not too worried about it. And as well as those in the room, if you have a room set up and you're like, how do I mimic that? Well, you can actually open your window. I know you're like, oh, the heat's going to come in, but you can place that box fan. You know, I, I grew up without AC. I'm from Florida. I grew up without AC sometimes. We didn't have AC. You know, sometimes it went out. Sometimes, you know, it froze over the coils, froze and whatnot. So what we had to do is we put a box fan in the window and then all that hot air, it makes it seem like, oh, it's going to blow in hot air. But for some reason, the air that comes in, it's blowing in cool air. I don't know the science behind it, but... That's what it does, so that can help cool stuff down. So both of those methods are gonna work with the fans. All right, so now I wanna talk about buckets. What can you do with your buckets or your pipes? So either you're doing an RDWC system or a DWC. Well, first up, RDWC, the buckets themselves, your reservoir, you can move the reservoir outside of the tent. You may have to do a little configuration to your you know, piping, but most people are already doing that. That's like the first step, or some people have it in their tent, but if you move that reservoir outside, you know, it, it allows that to cool down, and it, that's where everything circulates from. It's pulling that coolness back into there. Maybe a couple degrees, but at the same time, it's still adding cool water to the mix. And for DWC and RDWC as well, what you can do is insulate them, you know, add some reflectiveness to them. I know most of our buckets, like the go-to is black, right? But like that, that's how I mean, I, first thing I do is like if I'm buying a bucket and it's blue or orange, depending on where I get it from, I'm going to spray paint it black because it's the first thing that comes to mind. And, you know, I just want to black it out. I don't want any light leak. You know, that's a big worry right there for algae and whatnot and bacteria. So one thing you could do is literally cover it up, you know, insulated. They have like the reflective, you know, the reflective tape. You can add that on there or the actual like insulate. The, they have the insulation wrap. You can wrap it up. You can put a towel around them. It just kind of like allows that light not to really penetrate you know the blackness of our buckets you can actually spray paint the buckets white and it's still going to black them out yes they're not going to be visually black but it's going to add that you know the mix to it. it's going to stop the light leakage from coming in there because it's still paint going over it or you don't if you don't want to do white you can spice it up and do blue but white is going to be like the most reflective to the light and it's going to allow the temps to not it's not going to allow the leds and the lights or whatever lights you're running to really beam on the buckets themselves or like i said you can cover the buckets up and that's going to help keep those temperatures cool or at least fight off the intensity from the light another thing thing with the buckets is going to be the size if you're running a three gallon bucket which most people run five gallons that's like the common size that's what i run and that's what i've seen everybody else run five eight seven thirteen the more water there is 
the harder it is going to be to cool it or heat it up. So if you got, you know, so whatever you put it in there, say you put it in there at 65 degrees, well, it's going to take it a lot longer to hit 75 degrees if that's what your water is getting to as opposed to a five gallon bucket. So the bigger, you know, the more size you got, you know, the, the longer the temps are going to stay there. It's going to like so much more, but that's not a step you have to do. That is just something to consider. And you can also do frequent water changes. Maybe you got extra buckets laying around and to save yourself some time, you already got some buckets prepped or you just got your reservoir. You already got your mix going. You could literally just change more frequently. Maybe you have to change a couple times a day. Uh, don't do that. But <laughs> another thing you could do is actually change more frequently. Say you're doing a week to two weeks. They're changing your water. Well, you may have to do every three or four days. Yeah, it's going to suck because you're constantly doing something. You're a lot of waste of water, especially from our RO folks. Your filters are going to run out faster. And you're just going to water bill is definitely going to go up. That's one thing that's going to go up, but it's going to allow you to constantly replenish with some cooler water it's going to be that same thing in an rdwc system you could just drain it fill it back up real quick dwc system i know we got to sit there and like struggle a little bit change each bucket individually but i feel like rdwc when it comes to this type of stuff chilling it out that's going to be the easiest method to me because it's like you could just work everything from the reservoir that's actually why i want to move over to some rdwc stuff and speaking of chilling out the reservoir another thing and this is going to be the most costly one it is very expensive and that's a water chiller but it might not be as expensive as you think because i'm thinking four five six seven hundred bucks maybe a thousand and that's what i was thinking i was like these things are going to be expensive it is going to be like the best option and it is going to like it's literally cooling the water down so you don't have to worry about cooling the, the air down the, the tent could be hot the tent could be as hot as it wants it could be 75 but you know that water is good so the plants may be a little spicy but the roots gonna be a little cool so you're good so the costs aren't that bad like i thought they were super expensive they're actually like i looked so i seen a video from inside hydro shout out to Corey. um he actually got a water chiller and i they're not that expensive he literally got one for i think it was 174 to 200 bucks and i'm thinking they're three times that so i was like oh maybe i need to invest in one and for my dwc folks if you're running like four eight four to eight buckets you're running a bunch of different dwc buckets it's going to be hard to you know you're going to have to i'm assuming you get like a water chiller that has multiple outlets and that seems like a lot of work as opposed to getting an rdwc system and you know saving yourself that work and you know switching to rdw system doing a diy getting your bulkheads making it and with the rdwc system the water chiller boom place it right there into the reservoir everything's good so you have that freedom in an rdwc system to do something like that place the water chiller in there and that's going to make things a lot easier for you and that's where i'm moving towards in the future it's just pretty much you know i want to get a press but i also want a water chiller and i also want lights it's like well i got light sponsors so lights are good um water chiller i got to get that definitely when i'm working on getting a press right now that's like the first thing but water chiller is coming soon and also an rdwc system and the dwc i'm not going to give up on it i mean it's still the same thing it's just recirculating but i may just just do one or two plants you know i want you know i just want to dumb the plants down and just grow massive plants because i see them on instagram all the time and it's like we want big plants it, it's cool no matter i don't i mean of course it's probably going to yield some good stuff but i just like looking at like when you see the plants that are taller than people that, that's pretty impressive so and i'm it's not hard to really beat me in in the height i'm only five seven five eight so i definitely want to grow bigger plants in dwc but if you guys out there, you know any other ways to cool down these temperatures, really control it. I know the summer is kicking our ass. If any of you have anything else to add, like maybe I didn't cover something, maybe you have a different method or a different way that you cool your temps, let us know. Like we're, we're all struggling. The summer is kicking a lot of our ass. So go ahead and push that information out there. Let us see. Everybody check the comments because you, at the time I'm watching, I may have missed something, like I said, and somebody may cover it in the comment section or I may add to the comment section. But I appreciate you guys so much for checking out the channel, watching the video. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and remember to turn on the post and application bells and if you want a cool hat like this go to shopdusa.com and follow on instagram do all that cool stuff but until next time guys peace this video is brought to you with the help of the channel's sponsors spider farmer is a familiar name to most home growers and that's due to the countless people that use their products I'm currently using their SC5000 LED grow light which is a 500 watt light and I'm using that in my 4x4 tent this light fits perfectly within my tent and offers max light coverage throughout the entire canopy I'm honestly a huge fan of the bar style lights and they do it right over at Spider Farmer but the main reason I'm attracted to this light is due to the aesthetic and the accents of the orange that these lights it just caught my eye and it's part of the logo color so I had to go with that.
they have a huge variety of LEDs ranging from 30 watts all the way up to 1000 watts. So it's safe to say there's something in there for all growers. If you're interested in checking out any other products, check out the links down below in the description. They'll lead you straight to their website, as well as Spider Farm and being nice enough to give us a discount code. So at checkout, make sure you use code DUSA Farms and earn yourself a discount. Yes, I do earn commission from referrals, but it's only 3%, so it's not a lot. But at the end of the day, any purchase will help out the channel a lot.